Okay, uh, once again, a very good morning and a welcome to each one. Thank you for connecting on this call. Uh, let's pray and begin. We uh, will take time to study chapter 9 in uh, the book of, you know, we are understanding the prophetic. So, uh, firstly, I want to request one of us to lead in prayer. And after that, we'll get into chapter 9. Okay, uh, anyone here? Okay, Ravli, is it possible for you to pray, please? All right, let me just start off with a word of prayer. Heavenly Father, we thank you for this day. We thank you, Lord, for um, this time to study your word. Father, even as we do this, we pray that, Lord, you will give us revelation by your spirit. Uh, give us deep understanding, Father, so that, Lord, we can hear clearly from you. Uh, Abba, we thank you for uh, the truth of your word, Lord, which is available. And uh, we just pray that, Lord, with all of this, we will grow. Uh, in our personal walk with you and also, Lord, in the kind of ministry that we engage in. We worship and honor you. We bless you. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Okay, so let's uh, quickly go to chapter 9 of Understanding the Prophetic. And I will share my screen with us. So page 155 is a very important uh, page that we need to look at. I hope uh, you can see this well. All right. So in the last class, I remember we talked about the spirit and how the spirit of a man receives God's communication. And we said that when God wants to convey something. It is spirit to spirit. We've understood that it's like a lamp that the Lord chooses to light up. And when uh, illumination comes or communication comes, one picks it up. And then you know one is able to uh, uh, analyze it, assess it, and apply it in their lives. So this picture here, is a very good representation of how this communication works. So if you notice, we have spirit, soul, and body. Right, All three have been mentioned here. And uh, we stated that the spirit has senses just the way body has senses. And uh, the senses perceive from the outside world, as far as the body is concerned, the spirit senses perceived from the spiritual realm and this information then comes into the soul and the soul is where it gets processed once it is processed uh, what does process mean it means one is thinking about what they have just heard or what they have just perceived then one is uh, analyzing if you know this is from the Lord or if it is from them or you know if it's it's any other uh, suggestion and one also determines action what needs to be done on the basis of this communication so that is the meaning of processing that goes on in the soul and as we said last time all three parts of us the spirit, the soul, as well as the body are very, very important. We can't just say that, you know, because we are believers, we give more importance only to the spirit and we neglect the soul. Soul is not necessary. Uh, we definitely need the soul. Our mind needs to be renewed. Our will has to be healed. And our emotions also need to receive healing from the Lord. That's when they function at their optimum. And we will have the ability to make right choices and uh, live our lives as per the standard of God's word. So the soul is also important. And of course, the body. 
God has given us this body. We are we learn in scripture that uh, you know our bodies or every part of us, uh, even our our bodies, right, was created by God, and uh, we use this for the glory of God. So body is not a bad thing it's a good thing we are supposed to take care of it it's the temple of the holy spirit now having discussed these matters let's focus on the spirit senses and uh, the spirit senses there are five senses as we discussed last time these five senses that we we will look at individually are feeling the ability to see hear taste smell and here in this very diagram there are examples already it's it's listed out uh, but what we'll do is we will go into the rest of the section where each of these senses is explained quite thoroughly so uh, let me let me just uh, read out you know a, a few of few of the examples that are enlisted so when it comes to our feeling a continued feeling or a flash of a feeling you have a, a positive feeling where you're you're sensing something good joy or a, a comfort or calmness that communicates something positive a flash right it just comes and goes or we may have a continued feeling so you're constantly sensing the same thing uh, about a matter and you know god is communicating through that or a sense of being stirred up Right? In Acts 17, that was Paul's experience of being stirred up in the spirit uh, and uh, pressed, bound in the spirit. We see that in Acts 18, right? So that happens to Paul. And uh, similarly, sorry, Acts 20. And then we, we see experiences of people like Ezekiel you know, feeling bitterness or heat uh, in the spirit. So here are all these feelings that are happening in the spirit man when it comes to seeing okay, seeing uh we see pictures we have dreams we may have what we call as uh, a trance experience uh, dreams and visions we talk about visions visions uh, sometimes we we look at things that we view when we are awake uh, as visions right and uh, even in the case of prophets like ezekiel there are other experiences such as out of body experience uh, seeing in the spirit re realm uh, you know other other people like uh, elisha he saw into the spirit realm so there there can be umpteen number of experiences that exist out there uh, but some of the basics is to be able to receive some pictures or dreams visions uh, and maybe even you know a trance is is uh, something that we commonly hear about let's talk a little bit about hearing okay, hearing uh, from god so hearing has to do with the audible senses of the spirit man but we've clarified that it may not come with sound it generally is a word that is picked up in our spirit or it can be a sentence it can be a paragraph or it can even be a book right so a lot of content that we receive in the spirit and then we have to use it so a sense of taste and smell is also a part of the spirit so let us now look at the content in the section uh, and we will go over a, a little more detailed regarding each of these senses so the spirit sense of feeling the spirit sense of feeling um, what are the different kinds of feelings positive feelings um, or it can also be a negative feeling so negative feelings can be the kind that we described in the case of paul right he felt uh bound uh he felt uh, provoked so in Acts chapter 17, when he is in the city of Athens, he is provoked in his spirit, scripture says, because he looks at uh, uh, the fact that the gospel has not been preached in that city and people were uh, worshipping idols and that upset him. So provoked in the spirit. So that's a negative sense in, in a way, but it was calling him to action. 
thankfully he he felt those feelings but he knew that he has to do something positive out of it right and so he goes ahead and he does the ministry in uh, athens so it can be like this you know it can be a positive sense it can be a negative sense uh, but when we process it through our renewed mind we can come to the conclusion you know regarding the action that needs to be taken about that particular feeling um so you know one might have a sense of peace a peace is usually go ahead it's good right uh, and uh, colossians 3:15 says that the peace of god rule in your hearts so when we have that sense god is asking us to flow with what is happening uh, and yeah the negative senses we've already seen but there are also experiences such as Uh, you know bitterness and heat and that was the experience of ezekiel so in ezekiel 3:14 ezekiel says the spirit lifted me up and took me away and i went in bitterness in the heat of my spirit that the hand of the lord was strong upon me so notice it's a unusual feeling compared to the other normal you know expressions uh, of how god presence his uh, uh, you know this this feeling in our spirit so bitterness and heat any feeling right could uh, could be from god but the important thing is to pick it up and then know what needs to be done on the basis of that feeling so this is a little bit about the spirit sense of feeling uh, let me just pause for a bit and uh, i've shared a lot of my stories over the last couple of classes um i want to know if any of you have had the experience of feeling right feeling in the spirit and uh, if that led you to some form of action Okay, would like to share. Maybe Nina, Nina, have you ever had an experience where you uh, sensed positively about something, and it was the Lord speaking to you? Would you be okay to share any such experience, please? all right okay so if uh, uh, there's no experiences to share then we'll just continue here the sense of seeing uh, is as it states the ability to see we know that the lord jesus when he spoke parables uh, he made a very interesting statement we look at uh, one such one state such statement in matthew 13 and uh, verse 13 where he says therefore i speak to them in parables because seeing they do not see and hearing they do not hear nor do they understand so that's a very sad uh, state of affairs that though people know they don't get it they don't get the point and there are some senses that are referred to here they are seeing but they cannot perceive uh, you know that sight is not uh, perceptible or uh, hearing the words are going in but it's not reaching where it needs to so what was jesus talking about these were all people with um, eyes ears who were listening to the sermons of jesus he was talking about the spirit senses and saying that though people hear the word of god it does not penetrate beyond a certain level and the right way to take in the word is in our spirit 
right through our spirit senses to really see what he's saying uh, and to really hear what he's saying to really understand the message uh, rather than looking at it at a surface level so those were the eyes and the ears that he was referring to not the natural organs that we we have so in the spirit how does this sight sense work we may receive some pictures the picture could be a single picture or it can be accompanied by multiple pictures sometimes it can be a, a motion picture where you are seeing things happen one after the other uh, and and you know primarily this is how it works and take what we see can either come in as just an image or the other categories that we mentioned earlier right like dreams visions trances uh, and once we receive this the next responsibility that we have is remember we said the spirit perceives then you have the soul which processes rationalize reasoning anal analyzing and acting on what needs to be done so what are some examples the prophet jeremiah when god spoke to him uh, in Jeremiah 1 and uh, verse 11, God asks him, Jeremiah, what do you see? And he says, I see a branch of an almond tree. Right? So what is God speaking about? Right? God is speaking about the word that he's going to perform. But for that, an image was granted to him. That was the branch of an almond tree. So a branch of an almond tree will come to interpretation later. Uh, uh, but the image meant something. And that's the important part to grasp. So Jeremiah saw it and he told God, okay, I see this Lord. And then Lord himself speaks back to him, verse 12. He says, you have seen well, for I am ready to perform my word. So God gives him the interpretation of that particular image. And we notice that this is how God spoke to the prophets and many men and women of God, uh, to the prophet Amos. You know, God uh, showed him a basket of summer fruit in Amos chapter 8 and verse 1 and verse 2. God is asking him, Amos, what do you see? So, you know, that, that's the way it works, where God is asking, what is it that you're perceiving by sight of your spirit senses? And then Amos says, God, I see a basket of summer fruit. And then the Lord speaks to him about the meaning of what he just saw. So in verse 2, the end of that verse, um, God says, the end has come upon my people Israel. I will not pass by them anymore. So it's God is speaking about what is on his heart and communicating it to the prophets. Similarly, today, when we pick up pictures in our spirit man, God is saying something. Uh, and uh, we must interpret it. So what kind of pictures might we receive? It can be, you know, any kind of picture. Um, we may receive a lot of pictures that are mentioned in scripture for us. And that makes interpretation very easy. So when I see water, right? Once I remember praying with uh, uh, another young lady and we had gone on missions. And we were praying together for one particular person. And the way it was happening is the way we spoke earlier, where two or three can pray and then others can judge. That's a safe way to learn. So that's how we were praying. And uh, it's incredible that I saw a water body and she also saw another form of uh, a water body. And uh, we both shared it at the same time. And that was a great confirmation that God is speaking uh, about pouring out his spirit Right? Because water, we, we know out of your belly shall flow rivers of water. That's what scripture teaches us. So we see the connection in scripture and then we are able to accurately interpret. So water would have a couple of meanings in the word of God. And we trust the spirit of God to help us understand 
that particular meaning. Now, there can be images that are outside. I think we talked a little bit about it uh, earlier also. Uh, some of the modern day gadgets, which we don't have in, or they're not mentioned, right, specifically in scripture. But interpreting them is possible. And uh, for that, we have to depend on the spirit of God. Now let's move on. So there can be some of these images. Uh, dreams. We've seen earlier when we started the course on the prophetic, we read from Job 33. And uh, there, what God said is that God uh, gives a dream okay, uh, in a vision of the night. So when people are asleep, God still continues to communicate. And how does he communicate? God drops a dream in our spirit. And that is the instruction of God to guide uh, man, to lead man. And when we pick up these godly dreams and we interpret them, there is, there is a message coming through, which again is useful, helpful for us to uh, apply and take action. Visions. Uh, would you know of anyone who had a lot of visions in scripture? There's lots of people, but any one particular? OK, uh, Ezekiel, that's great. Yeah, any other prophets? How about Daniel? Oh, yeah, correct. So Prince is also saying Daniel. So he had many, many visions. Um, and visions even about the end times. So it's incredible. When we go through his visions, God was speaking to him in his days about what is, is taking place now and will take place in the years to come. So that's how amazing the communication of God is. Uh, and this is another thing. So God could be speaking about our now, or he could be speaking about the past or the future. It can be anything that uh, comes in in the form of you know, a picture, a dream, or a vision. Now, moving on to trance. So what is trance? Well, trance is the kind of experience that Peter had. We see in Acts chapter 10, that uh, when Peter was waiting for food to be prepared, he was very hungry. And in that situation, he went into a trance. Meaning his body became weak. Okay, So his body was uh, so, uh, sort of inactive. But at that time, his spirit was very active. And his spirit was seeing a vision where God uh, you know, brought down, uh, he saw a sheep being brought down with many animals and God was telling him, you go kill and eat. So the final interpretation of, of this particular uh, vision is God was just telling him that uh, now that Jesus has accomplished his work on the cross, Jew and Gentile, there's, all are accepted. So don't, don't uh, discriminate between uh, communities of people. The gospel is opened out to everyone. So don't call a set of people unclean. Because right after this, he was going to be sent to the house of Cornelius, a Gentile. And uh, before, Peter was, was someone who never wanted to do that. But God had to speak to him. This is the way God spoke to him, that in a trance, he saw this vision and he understood that God is telling him, go to the Gentiles. Don't say that they are not accepted by God. So in this way, you know, God communicated to him. But in a trance, the difference is, yes, we could be seeing a vision, but physically, uh, we may feel weak or just momentary, just momentary. Uh, I've heard in the case of uh, Maria Woodworth Etta, there is, uh, she's a minister of God in, you know, years gone by. And in her meetings, there was a lot of uh, trance happening. 
to to her also and to many of the people who were in the prayer meetings and it was something very unique so apparently you know she would just freeze for hours just freeze and uh, uh, so i mean this is not something that doesn't happen the point, only point i'm making is uh, there are examples even in history where people have had similar experiences and you know uh, this could happen then seeing into the spirit realm we have a, a classic example of uh, elisha praying for his servant and then god opens up his eyes and he's able to see the armies while they were thinking with they were alone a god shows them no you're not alone look all the armies are with you heavenly armies are with you so which eyes did elisha servant perceive this through the spirit eyes he was able to uh, see this and uh, balaam's eyes were open that's something we have already discussed in numbers 22 um isaiah Isaiah chapter six. You know, uh, we so oft repeated. We talk about the when in the year when King Uzziah died, the Lord Isaiah saw the Lord sitting on a throne high and lifted up, and the train of his robe filled the temple. How is Isaiah seeing this? Obviously, it's not through the natural eye; it's through the spirit eye. But there are cases like. as we saw earlier in the case of elisha and his servant that even the natural eye can be like an agent to perceive the spiritual realm and so in some instances we are seeing through our normal eyes physical eyes but then we are seeing things of the spirit happening around us even that is a possibility uh, so we can't box god up he will work whichever way he wants to we need to be open perceive it uh, out of body experiences the kind that ezekiel had uh, is also something that took him to other places and he was able to see things in the spirit paul once talks about going up to heaven right uh, uh, and not he but you know he he says i know a man in christ who 14 years ago whether in the body i do not know or whether out of the body i do not know god knows such a one was caught up to the third heaven so not as even paul is affirming something like an out of body experience uh, and this is in second corinthians chapter 12 in the passage from verse 1 to verse 4 so these are possibilities and uh, just for us to know and remember the sense of hearing Okay, so the sense of hearing, a classic example is uh, that of Samuel, and in the case of Samuel, it was audible. Uh, but most of the time, we just receive maybe a word. So I might see earlier I said we see water or a water body, but uh, hearing could come in light. We see the letter water written W A T E R. So when it's coming in like that we usually say it's a sense of hearing we are not seeing a picture but the word is coming in uh and uh, that is hearing but minus the sound so this is another way that the word of god comes to us so the experience of philip uh, we've mentioned this philip in acts chapter 8 when you know he was traveling he scripture says acts 829 the spirit said to him so when somebody is saying something we are supposed to hear it so how would have the holy spirit said something to him so we could guess that it's like the words coming into his spirit go near and overtake this chariot so he had that those words come into his spirit and he actually went and did it right and that's when he met the ethiopian eunuch see when we uh, do what god is asking us to do we will see the results of it you know it it can be just a simple thing like on that day philip uh, was told you just go a little faster and he did it like he never knew that he is going to meet the treasurer 
of uh, Ethiopia, a very influential personality, and that the gospel will go from uh, uh, you know the region of Judea into Africa. It's an entirely different continent, but that's what happened that day because Philip followed a simple instruction, just one line from God, go overtake the chariot. And this is also a way in which God speaks. He may not tell us everything that, okay, we are going to meet the treasurer of uh, the nation of Ethiopia. So I'm asking you to do this. No, sometimes it's just a small instruction. Do this, say this, don't do this. But it's all about obedience. So when we do, when we heed the the voice of the Lord, the impact is tremendous. Okay, so in this case, the gospel went to a continent because Philip obeyed. Right. So we saw that there was a sentence which was spoken to Philip. God can also speak many sentences. And another example of this is in Acts chapter 10, verses 19 and 20, where Peter, uh, uh, you know, God speaking to him. So let me just read it out for us. So Acts 10, 19 and 20, while Peter thought about the vision, the spirit said to him, behold, three men are seeking you. Arise, therefore, go down and go with them, doubting nothing, for I have sent them. So it's more than one sentence. It's like almost three sentences there. Behold, three men are seeking you. Arise, therefore, go down and go with them, doubting nothing, for I have sent them. So God can speak many sentences. Okay, and we've, we've already uh, talked about a download, receiving a download of a lot of information in one go. And that is a possibility. So the spirit sense of hearing. Uh, let's move on to the spirit sense of taste and touch. If you recall, the scripture in Psalm, Psalm 34 and verse 8, which says, taste and see that the Lord is good. So how, obviously in the natural, we don't get that. But in the spirit, you know, uh, we may have a sense of taste, like maybe in the presence of God, sometimes, uh, People people feel like, oh, I'm tasting honey or I'm tasting a sweet. Uh, but what's actually happening? The spirit is perceiving the presence of God in a positive way. Now, there can be the opposite of that as well. So a demonic presence. Maybe we, we feel a bad taste. And that's the sense that something is not okay. Because our spirit is perceiving it. Now, when we look at the example of Ezekiel, Ezekiel 3, verses 2 and 3, you know, Ezekiel uh, is asked to take in, right? He is uh, asked to eat the scroll. And when he eats it, he says, it was in my mouth like honey in sweetness. So even he had uh, a feeling or an experience of tasting in the spirit. Let's talk about uh, touch. Okay, touch. How could one experience uh, the sense of touch? Do you remember when Jesus was uh, walking and this woman with the issue of blood came to him? He was surrounded by a crowd. So it would have obviously been very difficult for him to notice anyone who touched him. Right, but he asks the question. Suddenly, he asks the question, "Who touched me?" And we also know she touched the hem of his garment. So, did he feel it? Most likely, physically, he may not have felt it because just a touch of the hem in a crowd where people are pushing you, people are touching Jesus from every side. But he's asking, "Who touched me?" for the lady who touched the hem of his garment by faith. So what does that show us? You know, a, a sense of touch, like Jesus would have perceived, he, he would have perceived that, uh, uh, you know, something has happened. 
something has happened. And uh, similarly, when it comes to uh, and in that entire scenario, another thing that he feels is the power of God flowing out of him. Okay? So he is experiencing all these things after that lady actually came and touched him. So the flow of the anointing excuse me, can happen uh, through a touch. Okay? So God... Uh, or, or Jesus at that time, he perceived, he perceived this feeling of being touched in the spirit. Now we too can experience it. Now we could say something like, you know, I felt touched by God, or I felt somebody uh, put their hand uh, on my shoulders, or I felt the embrace of God. We say all these things. It's possible that it happens in the spirit where we are experiencing these matters. Uh, now, what about smell? Scriptures say that we are the aroma of Christ. Okay, so even smell is sensing what God is speaking through smell is a possibility. And uh, uh, you know, I I remember in one of the prayer sessions at church. Uh, one of our pastors had this experience they were standing in a corner and only in that corner there was a fragrance of flowers and they called a few others to come and check it also and nobody was standing there like at least if somebody was standing there we could say it was like one corner of the hall uh, if at least somebody was had been there or somebody was standing there earlier we could say it's perfume or you know some kind of a spray but nobody was there for a long time. Only this particular pastor was walking and praying over there. And they shared how in one spot there was a strong smell, a beautiful smell. And another person also went and checked it out and uh, they could confirm that this is unusual. So when we were worshipping, it's most likely that the presence of God showed up in that manner and uh, you know, we could uh, actually smell the presence of God. So we've talked about all the senses right now. Um, now the question arises, how do we become more, like how do we develop the ability to perceive all these things? And for that, we have to become more sensitive to the voice of God. And one must train their spiritual senses. Okay? Training is uh, like exercising. Hebrews chapter 5, verses 13 and 14, it teaches us that when we talk about maturing, right, in, in Christ, maturing is when one has exercised their senses, it says. That's a lot of exercising, that's a lot of practice of the spirit senses over the course of time that one has been a believer. And then they are moving on towards maturity we would find that it's a lot easier to perceive, okay? And one gets better and better at uh, picking up the information from God as we are exercising our senses. So it's it's like yeah, just uh, exercising our muscle as well. So when we exercise our muscles, we know that it becomes stronger. And in the same way, if we exercise our uh, spirit senses, they become stronger and once they become stronger we are able to hear clearly from the lord so with that we come to the end of this particular section so what we will do is uh, we will take time to go through this chapter uh, it's really important to discuss it through and uh, i know today we've not we've not had any discussion so we'll come back the next class we will have a little bit of discussion about the spirit senses and then move on to the other chapters uh, and i hope that's okay so for now we will just close the class uh, and i request one of us to please go ahead and lead in prayer Uh, 
Yes, yes, Chira, please. Father God, I thank you for all that you've done in our life. Thank you for the wonderful teaching, my Father God. Thank you for Nancy, ma'am, Father God. Whatever we learn, whatever we are learning, my Father, help us to grow in all areas of our life, my Father God. We give you glory and honor. We thank you, my Heavenly Father. In the name of Jesus, we pray. Amen. Amen. Thank you. Thank you, Chira. Thank you, everyone. Really appreciate you uh, joining today's class. God bless you. Have a great week ahead. See you all in the next class on Friday. Bye for now.